this is our formula of what is going to make a proper embedded quote. We need four things. Transition, lead-in, quote, citation. Without those four, you don't have a proper embedded quote. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on page 77. We're going to skip over step two because that's not really going to help you out too much. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a couple of notes here. Okay, so on page 77, watch the screen. Three notes are going to pop up that I want you to copy. Ready? Here's the first. This is going to be a subheading for something that you're going to be writing in a moment. It's called example topic sentence. Okay, about halfway down to my notes column, we're going to copy this down. Example of an embedded quote. Last thing I want you to copy, I need mean, to check your understanding. I want you to copy down that heading. Okay, now our new screen is going to pop up, and you're not going to see the springboard page anymore. I'll walk you through where that information is going to be written down to help you out. We need to give you some relevant examples. That way, your brain starts clicking with ideas of how to incorporate this into your essay. All right? So on this next screen, let me walk you through what I'm going to ask you to do. So you see that red sentence all the way at the top? I want you to copy that red sentence in the My Notes column where you wrote the subheading Example Topic Sentence. Then you're copying that red sentence in the My Notes column all the way at the very top where it says Example Topic Sentence. All embedded quotes are our supporting details. That's all they are. But in order for us to understand how to write a supporting detail, why well, we need to kind of know what the heck are we writing about. So this example topic sentence, the reason why it's there is to give me an idea of what this person was needing to prove. So in this example topic sentence, it's letting us know that this paragraph needs to explain the three traits that makes Odysseus a hero. So we've got the trait of being clever. We've got the trait of being selfless. What's the third trait that this fake paragraph is going to help determine? Clever, selfless, and what? Okay. How is it going to be a hero figure, though? By being clever, selfless, and there's one other word up there. Can I like help you Inspiring. Inspiring, that's what. All right, now the next thing, you see those two block sentences written down? You're going to pick one of those quotes, and you're going to write that quote in the My Notes column, where you put the subheading, example embedded quote. I'm going to pick one of the blocks, and you're right here. Pick one of the block sentences, and you're right here. It doesn't matter which one, both are good examples, one isn't better than the other. The first one's a little bit shorter if you're wanting to save yourself some time. Now, both of the embedded quotes, they both are supporting details. That means each one has to either explain how Odysseus is clever or selfless or inspiring. That's what this sentence needs to provide. The first embedded quote, it's a supporting detail that proves how Odysseus is inspiring. The second embedded quote is a supporting detail that's proving how Odysseus is selfless. 
each one of those embedded quotes has a transition, has a lead-in, has a quote, and has a citation. You might end up using one of these examples in your essay because maybe what you're going to do is you're going to prove that a hero is selfless. So perhaps one of these embedded quotes that talks about or proves that this use is selfless might be something you want to use. It's a good supporting detail. So you see an example after an example after an example, but there's really no proof that you get it until you try it. So the next step that you folks are going to have to do is you're going to have to try writing an embedded quote. It's not hard at all. So you shouldn't get yourself concerned about it. You only have to think of four things. Transition, lead-in, quote, citation. That's it. It's not difficult. You shouldn't be scared about it. Okay? So at the bottom of page 77, you guys wrote down the subheading of Soldier Embedded Quote Example. All right, so here's what I'm going to have you do. Just watch the screen because all the directions are there. All right, Ryan, could you read the directions for us in the blue box? Okay, so you're going to decide, I'm either going to write embedded quotes regarding a man, or I'm going to write embedded quotes about a soldier. So now you know in your head how these men are heroic. But let's say that you don't. Let's say that you need some help. Watch what's going to pop up on the right-hand side of the screen. So the first thing is a reminder, how do you write these things? How do you write an embedded quote? It's a reminder, you need four things. You need the transition. You need to explain the quote, aka the lead-in. Then you give me the quote and the author's name. Now, here's something even better. When you folks are first starting out, one of the hardest things for you to wrap your head around is, I get what I'm looking for in terms of a quote. I get a citation, but what the heck do you mean about transition lead-in? Ready? Set? Boom. Here are four examples of transitions and lead-ins that you may borrow for this first try. You're going to get better at this every single day. But there are two examples of transition and lead-ins for Corporal Seegers, which was from the news article, Soldier in Afghanistan. And there's two examples of a transition and lead-in from a man. Now, here's the next thing. I don't want you to work alone. I want you to work with a partner. Considering that I've given you a pretty big spoon helping hand here by giving you a transition and lead-in, this shouldn't be very difficult, and it shouldn't take you a terribly long amount of time. So after about seven minutes have passed, you should have two embedded quotes ready for me to check out. All right, folks, it's now your chance. Practice this embedded quote. Put that hand up if you need some help, but I don't want you to do it a lot. All right, let's get going. Thank you.